Here we are in the SDDC manager, part of VCF 4.0, and just confirming that we have already deployed an NSXT Edge cluster. See that event there. And so now we're gonna go and have a look at our workload domain. We can see the NSX uh, components all available there. And of course, the whole objective here is to deploy a vSphere with Kubernetes. At the moment, there is no deployment in the workload management section, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're here in the prerequisites. There's obviously a license required to do vSphere with Kubernetes, and the other things are all to do with NSXT, NSXT edge cluster, and so on. So this drops us down into a section where we can select our workload domain and this will validate whether or not we have compatible clusters. And fortunately, we do have a valid or compatible cluster that we can use for creating uh, vSphere with Kubernetes. So there's a bunch of validation goes on here, just checking licensing, just checking NSXT, checking versions, uh, the usual kind of thing, just to make sure that this cluster, this workload domain, is capable of deploying vSphere with Kubernetes successfully. And so once all of those uh, validation tests have been successful, we can go ahead now and deploy Kubernetes. Um, you see the complete in vSphere button at the bottom of the screen here. So this takes us straight to our vCenter server. And when we pop in here, we'll be placed in the landing page, which will allow us to deploy vSphere with Kubernetes. So it's basically, again, another check to make sure that we have a compatible cluster, which we saw previously in the SDDC manager. The next step is to select the control plane virtual machine sizes. We're going to go for medium in this one, but there are other options available. And now we get into the networking section. This is split into two. This first section here that we're populating is really to do with the control plane VMs or the master VMs, all the information that's pertinent to those control plane VMs. And then we have the workload network. This is mostly to do with pod to pod communication. So I guess um, east-west traffic within the, uh, within the Kubernetes environment. Uh, of interest here are the ingresses and egresses. The ingresses are used for our load balancers in vSphere uh, with Kubernetes. The egresses uh, typically seen used with source NAT configurations within our vSphere with Kubernetes as well. So once all the networking information is populated, we're into the storage section. It's very straightforward. We're just picking a policy for each of those different components that are listed there. I'm just going to do the vSAN default policy for all three. And when that is completed, you just review your selection and confirm that you want to go ahead with the deployment. And so this is what you see in workload management. Now we are going to speed things up. And so you can see that when it's finished, we are given a control plane IP address, which we can connect to. This control plane IP address allows us to download specific tools that allow us to interact at the command line with vSphere, uh, with Kubernetes. So we can go ahead and do namespaces, but we're not going to do that for the moment. We'll leave that to later. Let's just have a look and see what has been deployed on our behalf. So in vSphere, we can see straight away that there's been three control plane VMs deployed. These are the three master VMs. Let's now pop back to our CLI. Let's log into our vSphere with Kubernetes. And once we're logged in there, we can query the actual configuration of our Kubernetes cluster. And you can see that we have three master VMs. You can see them there. But we also have three workers or agents as they're referred to here. And they are our ESXi hosts that are in that cluster. So we're going to go back to SDDC Manager. This is where we left off. Uh, we'll come back. It's a, it'll sync up in a moment. It still says configuring, but it will sync up in a moment. What we want to have a look at here really is NSXT. And from here, as we can see, we now have our workload deployment in place. But from here in our workload domain, we do have access to the NSXT services. We can actually launch the NSXT Manager. And once we log in, there's a few things I want to have a look at in NSXT, namely the transport nodes for both the edge and the hosts, but also the source NAT IPs, which come from our egress configuration and our load balancing IPs that come from our ingress. So here we are at the edge transport nodes. They look like they've been successfully configured. A total of 16 tunnels now. So there are a lot of things using our overlay network already. If we have a similar look at the host transport nodes, they obviously are part of a vCenter server, so we can uh, drop that down to see them. And once we expand that out, we can see a similar number of tunnels associated with those 
ESXi hosts as well. So let's now have a look at the NAT rules. So this looks like there's 13 created when we initially deploy that Kubernetes on vSphere. And if we have a look at those rules, you can see them. And interesting as well is the translated IP address, which is our egress range. And similarly to load balancer, we've already seen this. We have connected to download the CLI tools. Uh, that was the uh, uh, API controller on the uh, Kubernetes cluster in vSphere. But just to confirm that these load balancer IP addresses are coming from our ingress range, you can see them there. And as we said, there we have it used. So we're going to leave it there for the moment. I uh, hope that gives you a good idea of how easy it is to deploy out uh, vSphere with Kubernetes.